Welcome to Excel 2016, Module 11, Part 1. The first thing I want to talk to you about in this particular module is the version you are using. If you go to File, come down to Account, it will show you the version that you are using. You must be using Excel 2016 for this particular module to work properly. If you are using a newer version, such as 17, or an older version such as 2013, it will not work properly. So please ensure that you are in the cor correct version of the software. I am currently using IU Anywhere's Excel 2016 because the version I have on my computer is newer than that, and this does not work properly on mine. So please ensure that you are in the proper version of the software. In this particular part of our module, we will be creating a query, editing it, and then also talking about refreshing it. And we're going to create that tier query into an Excel table. So I'm going to start out by opening up. You can see I'm using Excel 2016. I'm going to open up one of the files that you downloaded from your Q drive when you started the semester. So I'm going to go out to where I have those particular files stored, which is on my desktop. And in module 11, we had a workbook called Revenue. So we're going to select that one. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to save it with a new name so that we can maintain our original one. So come into Save As, and we're going to call this Revenue Report. I want you to go over to the Revenue History Worksheet. Make sure your active cell is A3. And that's where we're going to be adding the table to in a few minutes. And now we're going to go to our Data tab. On the Data tab, you should see a Get and Transform group. If you do not see this, you are in the wrong version of the software. So please, again, make sure you're using the correct version of the software. And in this group, we're going to go to the New Query button and then we're going to choose to get the data from a file and we're going to choose a CSV file. CSV is another word for comma delimited file. We're going to choose the comma delimited file called revenue history and then we're going to choose import. So that we can get to our query editor, we're going to go ahead and choose Edit. The query editor does allow us to make some changes, which we will be doing um, in a few minutes. But you can see one of the things you can change is the name of your query. You can change these applied steps, which we will do later on in a later segment. You can change the fields that are coming in and other information. We're just going to go ahead and add this as it is right now, and then we'll go back in and edit it in a second. So we're going to choose the drop down arrow under close and load, and you're going to choose the option to ch close and load to. We're going to tell it to load into a table in the existing workbook or worksheet that we're in and it assumes to, it's going to insert into our active cell. So make sure it says A3 and then click on load. So you can see how quickly it grabbed the information out of that file. A comma delimited file means that the 
fields within the file are separated by commas. And so it reads that information and formats it into an Excel table. We can tell it's a table because we have our Table Tools tab up here on our ribbon. And we also now have a Query Tools tab on our ribbon since we are working with a worksheet query connecting us to another file. If we hover over the file, or the query, excuse me, the query name, we can then click on the word edit and it'll take us back into our query editor. One of the things that we can do in our query editor is that we can actually change the fields that are coming in. So if I decided that I did not need to see units sold or notes, I could click on units sold to highlight it, hold the control key down and click on notes. Now I can come over here in my manage columns group and I can click the remove columns button to remove the highlighted columns. So now it's only going to be bring in three of the columns instead of all five. I'm going to go ahead and click the close and load button so it'll bring that information in again. But it only brings in the three columns. One of the things to be aware of is you do need to be able to refresh your query. If the data changes inside the file the revenue history is linking to, you must refresh the query in order for your table to be updated. So in order to do that, you can come to the Query tab and see the Refresh button here. If you click that, it'll go out and it'll look at that table again and update the data with any changes. You can also come into the Data tab and on the Connections button, it'll show you a list of any queries that you have in your workbook. If you click on one and go to Properties, it does allow you to change some of the settings in here. Enable background refreshing. Refresh every time period and refresh when opening the file. So if you check one of these other options, then it will refresh automatically for you instead of you having to manually refresh it. And that concludes part one.